engineering ahead of its time. Deep below the bustling life of the city of Chicago rests an engineering marvel that solved the bustling metropolis's biggest problem. This is the story of a 175-kilometer, 108-mile-long tunnel where long-forgotten passages echo with whispers of a glorious past and a brighter future. In the latter part of the 1800s, Chicago was facing an influx of inhabitants, but the city's infrastructure was inadequate to hold them. Just before the dawn of the 20th century, a tunneling project was envisioned to make life in the city easier. Back then, the streets were filled with horse-drawn wagons carrying goods for businesses. The streets were often jam-packed and very dirty. Especially for a city that faces a lot of rainfall, mud and filth on the streets made it nearly impossible to move around. So, an ambitious bust-the-bank tunnel project was conceived to solve the enormous sewage issues. Chicago was built on a low-lying, flat and swampy area. So they thought, why not just lift the city out of the mud? Considering the cost of this project, the city was initially just lifted a couple of meters out of the swamp. A network of sewage pipes was established just beneath the city, and the rest of the area was filled with mud. Little did they imagine that for solving one issue, they were giving birth to another, even more major problem. The brand new sewers, shiny and efficient, were pouring directly into the waterways. These waterways, like great veins, fed into Lake Michigan, the beating heart of the city's drinking water. This unfortunate setup led to sickness and disease spreading among the city's people. With a huge problem on hand, officials began searching for another fix. If you thought lifting a city off the ground was a grand scheme, hold on to your hats for what comes next. In an unprecedented feat of engineering, the direction of the Chicago River was literally altered. Instead of its natural path into the lake, it was made to flow into the Mississippi River. Changing a river's flow is no small task. It started with the construction of a series of locks and a brand new 45-kilometer or 28-mile long canal sloping downhill. Then came the pumping stations, directing water through the canal as it deepened, journeying toward the Des Plaines and Mississippi rivers. This created a reversal effect. Even today, the river stands as a testament to human ingenuity, actually flowing backwards. But as the city's population continued to grow, the innovative sewer system started to become strained. By the 1960s, the sewers were overflowing nearly every other day. Flooding became a regular event. Chicago once again found itself struggling to stay afloat. It was like staring into the abyss with the city's future hanging in the balance. The Water Reclamation Authority joined forces with other local bodies and set a bold new plan into motion. They introduced the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan, the Deep Tunnel System. If you think it was something ordinary, think again. The plan consisted of a vast underground network stretching 175 kilometers or 108 miles, featuring three huge reservoirs right through the heart of downtown Chicago. Designed as a weapon against the unending battle with overflow and pollution, this innovative plan was like none other. Surplus water from the storms, a relentless foe, could now be rerouted through this labyrinth of new tunnels, held captive in the reservoirs for treatment, and then released. This heroic endeavor began in 1975 with Phase 1, the birth of the tunnels. But these weren't just ordinary tunnels, they were gigantic, monstrous creations. Four unique systems were dug under solid bedrock, reaching up to 10 meters in diameter. The decision was made to use a tunnel boring machine to create these tunnels in the rock, even though traditional drilling and blasting might have been cheaper and more reliable at the time. In the beginning, only about 50 feet of a tunnel could be constructed in a day. Within a decade or so, that number had increased to between 150 to 200 feet per day. By the time the tunnel network was completed in 2006, it could manage nearly 9 billion liters or 2,375,000,000 gallons of water and had reduced pollution by nearly 85%. Instead of unintended backlashes, the project now yielded numerous side benefits. 
Despite not being constructed with climate change in mind, the deep tunnel system became a knight in shining armor, a critical tool in the war against this global problem. With heavy rain and storms predicted to batter the Midwest, the deep tunnel system stands as a bulwark against potential flooding and water contamination. When it rains in Chicago now, the water first flows into the local combined sewers. This water, which originally directed into rivers, are now intercepted by the new sewer system. The overflow then shoots down a drop shaft into tunnels deep underground, where it's pushed into the reservoirs for storage until there's enough capacity at the reclamation plants to clean it. By 2029, when all three reservoirs are finished, the entire system will be able to hold over 64 billion liters, or nearly 17 billion gallons of water. This will help reduce flooding and pollution after big storms, and even though there's still construction work to be done, Chicago is already enjoying the benefits of its secret tunnel network. The waterways are cleaner, allowing more fish species to return. Since the 1970s, the number of species has increased from 10 to nearly 80. Waterfront property construction is booming, boosting Chicago's economy. The city has even built a new river walk with restaurants and bars that become a popular spot for locals and tourists alike. However, during big storms, the system can reach capacity. When that happens, it reverts to the original process of directing the combined overflow into the waterways. This can cause polluted water to flood streets and basements. And as climate change worsens, this could become a more regular occurrence. Chicago is looking at potential expansion of the tunnel and reservoir plan and considering the use of more green infrastructure. The idea is to mimic nature by having water infiltrate into the ground through bioswales and rain gardens. The goal is to keep water out of the sewer, preventing it from reaching the waterway or backing up into basements. For more than a hundred years, the city of Chicago has consistently found a way to outsmart one challenge after another, employing some of the most monumental engineering feats known to mankind. However, preparing for the uncertainties of climate change is like shooting at a moving target. This looming global threat, a future for which we have no prior example to guide us, demands that we ready our cities in numerous and innovative ways. The role of construction is paramount in paving the way towards a sustainable future for us all. While we may all experience the growing frequency of storms, the way Chicago addresses these challenges is largely hidden from view. This tunnel is also so far the biggest construction undertaking that the world has ever witnessed. You thought the story's over? Well, sit back, because there's a lot more beneath the city's surface than you can imagine while walking on the streets above. Let's start off with the Pedway, a widely visited subterranean marvel in the city. This intricate network of tunnels connects 50 office buildings, shopping centers, train stations, and parking facilities, an especially convenient option during the harsh Chicago winters. Open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays, the Pedway weaves together more than 40 blocks and stretches over five miles beneath the pulsing core of the city. It also houses a diverse array of vendors from cozy coffee shops to bustling food stands, allowing you to indulge in a snack or meal as you journey beneath the urban landscape. What many people also don't know is that there was once an intricate web of freight tunnels over a century old that zigzagged beneath the city. The expansive network was built by the Chicago Tunnel Company, and it once bustled with miniature electric trains. These trains were used for a wide variety of services, such as transporting ashes, delivering mail, and laying down telephone lines. They even offered Tunnel Air as a natural air conditioning system for theaters and hotels. Among the tunnel company's clients were several landmark buildings, including the Board of Trade, City Hall, Merchandise Mart, Chicago Tribune, Civic Opera House, and the Field Museum, and many, many more. The freight lines ceased operations around 1959 and gradually faded from memory until a disaster occurred. 
On April 13, 1992, construction workers inadvertently punched a tunnel roof while driving wood pilings into the Chicago River. This caused hundreds of thousands of gallons of water to flow into the tunnel system. Widespread flooding followed in buildings throughout the city, resulting in damages exceeding $2 billion. Today, the tunnels are sealed off and virtually inaccessible. The floating, sinking tale of Chicago ends here. We'll be back with another story soon, so be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned in.